In this video, we're gonna look at the falling three methods candlestick pattern. Not a bad one this, stay tuned. Hey traders, very warm welcome to your home. Now watch hand and wave with now. I'll give you a double hand and wave. Hey, welcome back guys. If you are a seasoned subscriber, if you've seen before, if you're new, a very warm welcome to you and consider subscribing to the channel if you like this kind of stuff. All right, let's talk about this. Falling three methods candlestick patterns. We've talked about candlesticks before and basically we're trying to use the pattern of each day or sequence of days. In this case, we've got four, oh, sorry, five days of price that we're kind of going to use as a clue to where we might go next. So let's look at this kind of strategy. And what most importantly with these guys is that we're trying to look for a strategy we can use in our own trading. That's the whole point of this thing. And also somewhere where we can manage the risk and, and have a good area where we can define the risk. All right, falling three methods. I like this, I'm gonna explain why. You've got to look at this, this has definitely got to be in the context of a downtrend. So imagine, you know, a sequence of red candlesticks there, and this is day one here. And then we've got day two, day three, day four, day five corresponding. So each candle is representing a day. And if you're unfamiliar with candlestick patterns, go and check out some of the other videos I have done on actual the basics of candlesticks to get yourself up to speed with that. Right, day one, we have a down day. Okay, now, the next three days, which is the three methods, so from here to here, day two, three, and four, after this primary downtrend, uh, primary big sort of down candle day, big solid red body, you know, looking on intraday basis, intraday chart would look like this, pretty much, push, push, there. Nice downtrend day, starts at highs, close at lows, decent range. Day two, three, and four, we're getting bulls trying to get back but they're not, and this is something that I've, I've not, I have to admit, I've never kind of looked at it and said, okay, this is the falling three methods, but I've always looked at this and said, okay, what is that telling me? That's telling me that despite, you know, the, the, the big down day, big move, but bulls are, even after three days of effort, can't reclaim one day of move. And often you see this with, with various instruments, like multiple days where it can't climb back. And sometimes I'll put it into a larger perspective and say, okay, a three day move. Look, the bulls can't even take back the first day after a three day move. And this would really be, you know, you'd see other reds here anyway. But the point is supply demand is really, really in the demand phase. Massive, ma sorry, in the supply phase. Massive, massive supply coming in, pushing it down. A little bit of demand comes in, tips the balance, you get an update get a second update, a third update, but it's not enough to even get anywhere near taking out the high of that. And obviously, you can probably see the lower or the less, if you like, into the range, into that range these go, the weaker it really is. And so we're waiting for the next day after kind of three, I don't know, it says three, but you can have three, four, you can have, really have two really, I suppose. The point is the bulls have had time. They've had time to reclaim lost ground and they haven't. Or to frame it a better way, buyers haven't perceived that as obscene value yet. And that is giving you an insight into the underlying current of what is driving that market. That is key. Buyers think, you know what, they may be buying a bit, but whatever, sellers still think that's value and are holding it down. You haven't got any aggressive, really aggressive buyers driving it up. Next day, little bit of selling, Cascades takes out that low, that low, that low, and that low. You've got ample opportunity to get short. That is the idea of the trade. If you see this, you're looking for a short opportunity on the fifth day after those three kind of poor efforts from the bulls. How do you frame the trade? All right, so let's have some ideas on this. And by the way, let's have a look at an intraday basis. Can we see it on the screen? We just about can. There's our day one here. Day two, yeah, day three, day four. So there's day two, and it's a really bad drawing. And then day five is the slamming. Okay, so it's really struggling to get back up, can't really get back up, can't probably break 50% of the range, whatever the range isn't that massive, but the point is can't get up. Okay, how do we structure the trade? Let's get back to the point. The point is, right, when we see, now we can either take a trade of, okay, if it breaks out this high after day four, and then comes back in. So let's have a look at that in a bit more detail. Where's the best place to put it? Down here. Uh, can we see that right? So if we have this scenario, let's say it's day four and we've pushed up, dot, 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 dot. If day five, we break out the high, then come back in, 
I think you can go short on a push back through with a stop above. It's aggressive, admittedly, but it's got a good chance of success because you've got the prior pattern that is just before that. So you get the push up, fails, comes back in, you take the short after it fails out, fakes out, does a wick, comes back on, take the short. You can have a pretty tight stop so you can get pretty heavy on your position size with that one. Starts to roll over, where to add to it, I would always be pressing the, sh pressing the shorts as we kind of broke through lows. Pressing, 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 or if there's an intraday opportunity, you know, it comes back up, forms a kind of resistance level, you know, press some more shorts off of that, knowing I've got the comfort of a broader pattern behind me that's likely to work out. If you don't want to do it that way, then, you know, obviously you could put in very, and that, that requires some monitoring intraday. If you want to kind of set it and forget it, swing trading perspective, you could probably set a stop sell entry here under that low or under any of those lows, or if you're really conservative under this low, but bearing in mind then, you've probably got a really decent range day behind it. It may well congest a bit before it goes. The very weakest ones, of course, are going to have day two a big follow through, but that may well just congest a touch might kiss back in. So you you got to be cautious about that. you got to give it a bit more room if that's the way you're going to play it. I prefer to play it a little bit more aggressively, a little bit more early. Maybe take a couple of stop outs first before I get on the end of a good risk reward ratio trade because I'm risking one to make 10 in this kind of scenario. Um, but going back to the original point, if you want to kind of set and forget, uh, there would be your entry here. Your stop would be above here. And then your target would be based on kind of some sort of a uh, longer term analysis that you've done. So you can frame it quite comfortably using that strategy. Anyway, that's the falling three methods, guys. I quite like it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Thumbs up if you like this kind of stuff. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Keep the risk managed. Main thing. Goodbye.